What I'd like to do is, is cover three kind of topic areas. One, provide uh, for those of you, particularly who haven't been in this space, uh, an understanding of the international conferences and organizations, the international community that has uh, uh, really, we, we, uh, that we are part of and that we learn from, and then describe and introduce the International Biochar Initiative. I'm a board member of the International Biochar Initiative and a past chairman of the board and the United States Biochar Initiative that I currently chair. Uh, and then finally looking at needs for support. When we look at, at international organizations and, and conferences, uh, the, uh, uh, the biochar community really has been built up over the last 15 years with a series of combined academic and, and private efforts. The International Biochar Initiative, of course, starting in about 2006 with several uh, conferences. Uh, in 2016, adding the Nanjing Agricultural University as a representative in, in China. The Asia Pacific Biochar Conferences have been very productive since 2009. We've all learned a lot. The Australia, New Zealand Biochar Conferences as well. Uh, China is now formed with Biochar Industry Technology Innovation Strategic Alliance. Uh, there's the European Biochar Certificate, which was, I think, result of a cost European Union project. ICHAR in Italy, uh, Italian Biochar Initiatives hosted a couple of great conferences. New Nordic Biochar Network has been very, uh, very active, very interested. There's the UK Biochar Research Center, uh, which has contributed as well as Cornell, other organizations. And finally, the US Biochar Initiative, which we created after our first North American Biochar Conference in 2009. So there are a lot of international groups uh, and the number of groups doesn't necessarily reflect the, uh, the level of activity. There's far more activity in Africa than the three groups. The African Biochar Partnership is probably the key active one. In Europe, there's several groups uh, that are created. Many of these groups are created from uh, research projects. Uh, they developed into so-called initiatives and some are more active than others. And so we've seen a lot of activity, uh, especially emerging activity in the Middle East on saline soils, um, Eastern Asia, Japan Biochar Association is one in particular that inspired many of us from back as early as 2004. Southeast Asia uh, Biochar Malaysia Association is meeting tomorrow and then we communicate with these organizations and they're an important part of our understanding of, of biochar uh, and communication around the world. And of course, there's been a lot of activity in Australia and the Pacific. In North America, uh, Canada, uh, three organizations have kind of come and gone uh, back and forth coming. They come into view depending on who's leading the parade. Uh, private organization, Pyrolis seems to be uh, kind of the rallying organization in Canada and Mexico. Agricultural Rural Development, the national uh, agency, uh, basically the Forest Service kind of leads the activity there. Caribbean and Central America, again, there's a lot of activity with biochar in these countries, but not many organizations. And equally in Brazil, in uh, South America, for example, there we see a lot of activity in Ecuador, Colombia, uh, Brazil, number of countries, but not necessarily reflected in an organization. In the United States, uh, we have the U.S. Biochar Initiative. Uh, we have various organizations which have come and gone. The Alaska, Bio Alaska Biochar uh, was created, kind of faded for a while. It's back in action. California Biochar Association, which launched in 2016 uh, out of the Sonoma Biochar Initiative, uh, has been very productive. And, and thank you for, uh, again, for organizing this forum. Eastern Biochar is a group that started 2000, 2017 in West Virginia and has emerged as uh, a Mid-Atlantic representative group. Illinois Biochar Group meets once a year. Pacific Northwest, Rocky Mountain, Seattle, some of these groups uh, are not as active as they have been in the past. Uh, one group I'd like to point out, the MQA Biochar Education Team, Kelpie Wilson's group in Southern Oregon, it's been very active. The other thing I'd like to uh, 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 talk about are the agencies, uh, research and industry organizations, the, the agencies like the U.S. Department of Agricultural, Agricultural Research Service. A lot of people don't uh, appreciate the contributions. Uh, Kristen Tripp earlier described the, their char net, the network of 
USDA researchers, which really is an international uh, uh, network of biochar researchers that has given us tremendous support uh, from a scientific point of view. Another scientific community, there's a biochar community within the so-called tri-societies, the American Society of Agronomy, uh, Crop Science Society of America, and Soil Science Society of America. There are about 400 members and it's international in nature. The Forest Service has been a strong supporter for us in the last uh, uh, few years, bringing us in contact with uh, putting, putting on a monthly webinar se series, uh, putting us in contact with the Society of American Foresters, Soil and Water Conservation Society, National Association of Conservation Districts and others. And this is primarily, they made some good investments through the wood utilization program. Uh, the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service, we've, uh, uh, their soil health program has also been very cooperative and active in the last five or six years and US EPA and mine remediation. There are a few biochar industry associations which have emerged and we are in communication with all of them. In China, I mentioned the Industry Association, Europe and Australia. Here they are in China. Uh, there are 62 producers. Uh, the last time I checked, I reportedly produced 500,000 tons of biochar-based fertilizers last year. That's grown very, very rapidly. Uh, this is an, a national program with some subsidies involved. They launched a biochar journal uh, in 2019. Europe, we have the European Biochar Industry Consortium, or EBI, which now has uh, an executive director, Harold Beer. Uh, started out with this group of six or seven companies, and they've more than doubled that now, uh, active group. Uh, Australia, the Australia New Zealand Biochar uh, Conference actually morphed this year into an industry group. Uh, and a great, uh, very active group put on a great conference in July. Uh, very generous in terms of uh, sharing their science, sharing their experiences. But what about the International Biochar Initiative? The International Biochar Initiative, uh, as many of you know, started out in about 2006. It's international in nature. It's a membership organization with professional business organizational members. Uh, IBI puts out a monthly newsletter, um, uh, excellent uh, piece uh, that is both research and business oriented, uh, occasional white papers to respond to issues. Uh, we do educational and outreach. Uh, Kathleen Draper, the chairman's uh, study tours are, have been very well attended, very popular. Uh, we have a number of very good webinars, uh, work the website and social media. Our mission is to provide a platform for fostering stakeholder collaboration, good industry practices and environmental and ethical standards to support uh, biochar systems that are safe and economically viable. Uh, we have this broad and ambitious vision of a billion tons of biochar produced per year within 50 years. And our solutions are networking, education and demonstration. IBI is a nonprofit organization, uh, difficult sometimes to run a nonprofit organization that is uh, uh, it has a number of uh, academic participants, uh, and of course, everybody's busy with no time, uh, but we try to engage the different sectors, demonstrate biochar use, uh, work on some policy incentives, uh, chew on uh, quality standards, and, and try to create market diversity, and, uh, and always collaborating with industry. And here's our board. Our board is composed of uh, uh, about a dozen of us uh, uh, from all across the globe, uh, very active, a lot of experience in different areas of uh, biochar, not only in biochar and soils, but also, for example, Harn Wei with cement, at, uh, National University of Singapore. Our administration is done uh, by a, an association uh, uh, management organization in Washington, D.C. Brian Shore is our executive administrator. Stephen Joseph manages our sort of education component. And Bob Gillette uh, puts out that wonderful monthly newsletter. Our science committee, again, uh, an all-star list of researchers in the biochar world. Uh, and they come and go, We depending on what we ask them to do. Um, but uh, really a good, very capable group of people. IBI started out generating standards uh, and a certification process to be able to, to monetize carbon, trade carbon in the international market as described before. Uh, basically the certification, which was intended to 
ensure that we had safe, stable, and sustainable uh, biochars that we could sell. The certification process and the, the, the protocol uh, was not accepted, uh, but there's an effort, as Simon mentioned, we have a carbon committee uh, going back at it again. And since that time, we've seen uh, other efforts at certification, the European Biochar Certificate, European Biochar Feed Standard, uh, USBI as a draft protocol, uh, proposed standards from China. Um, Australia has now adopted a code of practice as of last year. And there are different biochar grades and uses that have been adopted by the European uh, Industry Consortium and also by the Australian New Zealand uh, Industry Group. There are additional definition standards certifications in, uh, uh, in use in, uh, uh, just to point these out, the American Association of Plant Food Control Officials adopted a biochar definition in 2016. The Organic Materials Review Institute adopted a definition for biochar in 2017. California Association of Air Pollution Control Officials uh, adopted the biochar protocol from the IBI in 2015. USDA Natural Resource Conservation now has two practices in which uh, provide cost share for using biochar in agriculture. Uh, the most recent one being their soil carbon amendment interim practice they introduced uh, just this year. So what about the US Biochar Initiative? The US Biochar Initiative uh, really grew out of a conference, a North American Biochar Conference in 2009 that was organized by Ron Larson, John Levine, and others uh, was really kind of a launching uh, for the uh, organization for North America. And for the first several years, it has been a basically a platform for conferences, bringing people together, uh, funded primarily by sponsors of those conferences. Um, so it's North American Scope. It's not a membership organization at this time. Uh, it's been funded by uh, both sponsorships, uh, companies, and, and grants. Uh, we provide announcements, newsletters, websites, uh, announce things through social media, and do education and outreach. Our mission is promoting the production and use of biochar in North America for sustainable food security, improved soil fertility, environment, and climate resilience. Here's the IBI board. It's a volunteer board. Um, and uh, all of us uh, put in a lot of extra time to support the uh, uh, USBI. I see I've got it tagged as IBI. It's actually the USBI board, uh, but we appreciate the time and attention that all of these board members uh, put into the effort. Our solutions fully engage scientific agriculture and biomass communities to produce and use safe, stable, and sustainable biochar to research, educate, promote, demonstrate, develop markets, policy incentives, and quality standards. Well, that's a big order compared to our original mission of, uh, of simply um, uh, putting on a conference once every couple of years. Uh, we've done surveys uh, with the assistance of organizations like the Forest Service. Uh, we've identified about 135 producers across the country with a capacity of producing about 100,000 tons of biochar per year. Additional to that and separate from the USBI are the barbecue charcoal producers uh, it's important to understand that there are about 33 producers and about 830,000 tons of barbecue ch charcoal produced a year in the United States. So what have we accomplished? Uh, many thanks to Gloria Flora for chairing the organization uh, from 2009, 2010, when we organized it uh, to 2016. And since that time, uh, the organization has expanded again in its activity. Uh, we've continued conferences and networking, uh, three conferences, again, sponsored by primarily the biomass industry, uh, biochar industry, I should say. Outreach and education, we've done uh, since 2017, again, with support from organizations like Forest Service. We've done uh, outreach. We answer the phone. We talk to a lot of potential producers and users. We've done studies, developed draft test protocol. Uh, we've done studies on labeling and on markets. We've done a number of, uh, or helped uh, cooperate, uh, uh, do a number of workshops across the country. We've done demonstrations. The picture in the lower left-hand corner is our latest demonstration last week with two demonstrations in Oregon of a uh, mobile carbonizer that can recover uh, biochar. I think a real significant activity that uh, was led by Josiah here just a few months ago and the University of California at Davis was recommending best management practices of biochar to the California Soil Health Program. And we'd like to 
uh, do more of that and get these soil health programs involved. So we've decided to, to sort of redouble our efforts, uh, upgrade our website. Uh, we have a directory online that we hope that those of you in the biochar uh, industry and, uh, and, and supporters will uh, pay a small fee to uh, be listed in the directory. Uh, we have uh, weekly postings and activity on social media. This year, we have decided to relaunch the newsletter. Um, Kelpie Wilson is editing that uh, along with a very capable education committee that we organized. Um, and we're out for, uh, I think, the second month of the newsletter. Uh, Dr. Isabel Lima, USDA Agricultural Research Service, is, is going through qualifying laboratories. Uh, she's, uh, I think, contacted about 14 laboratories to understand uh, what biochar analyses they can do, uh, what they're capable of, what their costs are, um, and uh, generating more at a scientific level discussion about biochar analysis to provide the tools that we need for ensuring customers that we have quality assurance and quality control in our products. Um, we're also working on a biochar marketing strategy we've gone through and and been interviewing biochar producers and users to, to try to figure out how we can expand existing markets. So our goals for 2021, uh, biochar production and use, we'd like to double the production of biochar to about 100,000 tons a year. Uh, we'd like to work on creating a biochar industry association. The biochar industry is very small, has a large number of small producers, a few large producers. Um, we want to work on things that reduce production costs. We want to standardize methods of analysis, uh, look at the, the potential of identifying biochar grades and uses that would match uh, biochar qualities with uh, appropriate uses. Uh, continue to work on the strategic plan, the directory, um, again, fit products uh, to uses. One thing we've done a lot of in the last two years is uh, look at is developing relations with key strategic alliances, if you will, with groups like the U.S. Composting Council. We put on a workshop uh, for the annual meeting of the U.S. Composting Council. Just today, they requested uh, our participation in a uh, special group to investigate the use of biochar uh, and management of pesticides. We work with the Construction Demolition uh, Recycling Association that generates large quantities of clean wood waste that could be converted to biochar. We work with the biomass power uh, organizations, uh, biomass power industry. Uh, we work with agricultural processors that have residues like oat holes and with re regional research organizations like the Northern Regional Research Institute uh, that have taken a special focus on biochar for stormwater and the applications that Chuck Hegberg was describing. Uh, we want to support our biochar users through continued and increased communications, conferences, whatever's necessary. Uh, we want to research and demonstrate uses. And we also uh, want to continue our work on policy. Uh, we've, we've helped to support uh, efforts towards legislation in a number of states. Uh, there's a lot of interest in uh, biochar for feed. We'd like to be able to support that. We want to develop incentive programs for use, such as the carbon Proco protocol. Uh, and we want to promote biochar as part of as solutions or part of solutions to, uh, to solve issues with biomass residues, soil health, water quality, and climate change. So our strategies, uh, we're making a, an, an effort looking for funding uh, through either grants or donations, uh, collaborative kinds of projects that we can do, that we can manage, that will help promote uh, biochar uses and biochar research. We're continuing our outreach activity with the, uh, with the Forest Service, uh, again, uh, promoting the directory, uh, educational activities, uh, working on test protocols, and supporting policy. So how can you help? Uh, join uh, the International Biochar Initiative, which is a membership organization. Volunteer for the US Biochar Initiative or the International Biochar Initiative. Sponsor either organization or and regional programs or donate to International Biochar Initiative, US Biochar Initiative, and of course, regional organizations like uh, the Sonoma Biochar Initiative, California Biochar Association. So with that, um, Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. We appreciate that very much, Tom, and uh, um, uh, very much looking forward to uh, 
uh, having some people uh, pour in those donations. <laughs> that was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, hang on here. So I just want to uh, end by thanking all the presenters for sharing their knowledge and all the attendees for dedicating the time to learn about this amazing simple form of carbon we call biochar. As I said at the beginning, there were many, many other guest speakers we would have liked to have included. There's an incredible uh, variety of, uh, of knowledge in this industry, uh, but we just didn't have time for it. And I hope they will record presentations and submit them to us for inclusion on the website. It's apparent that there's no one way to make biochar and there are many, many different uses for it that expand upon the traditional agricultural uses. And there are enormous opportunities for investment by philanthropies and investors that want to contribute to a natural climate solution with many additional societal and ecosystem service benefits. We urge you to contact any of the presenters for more information. And remember that all of these presentations will be posted on the scalingbiochar.com website within a few weeks. So you can review them again and or get the contact information for each presenter. You can also contact me at Raymond at Sonoma Biochar Initiative.org and I can pass it on. And just a quick plug for uh, the Sonoma Biochar Initiative and the California Biochar Association and our sponsor, the Sonoma Ecology Center. As Tom and Josiah made clear, we're always looking for investment or donations to help build capacity or to sponsor individual education or training programs. And we have a number of important projects that we could roll out right away if we could find the funding. So contact us about that if you uh, are interested. With that, I again wanna thank you all and just hope that you can uh, join us in the afternoon breakout session starting at one o'clock if you have questions that you can sign up for on the scalingbiochar.com website. So with that, thank you very much.